Caffeine is by far the most used drug in the world. From old to young, caffeine is consumed by almost everyone. I personally prefer coffee, and honestly, I can't imagine having to go a day without it. As a chemistry enthusiast, I have always loved recrystallizations, so naturally extracting caffeine from coffee and recrystallizing it has always been one of my goals. Today, I'm going to extract caffeine from Deathwish Coffee, which is advertised to have more caffeine than any other blend. Though most people are pretty sure they just add extra caffeine to the bag. If this is the case, it's honestly ideal in this situation. So let's start our procedure. First we have to make the coffee. In an Erlenmeyer flask, I add 20 grams of Deathwish coffee, followed by 7.2 grams of sodium carbonate. The sodium carbonate will react with the tannins in the coffee to make them more water soluble. Then I add 100 milliliters of distilled water and bring the coffee to boil. Once boiling, we will keep it boiling for about 10 minutes. If there are any bubbles forming, this usually just means there is too much heat and we can go ahead and turn it down. After this, we will need to do a hot gravity filtration. This is to remove the coffee grounds from the liquid. We want to make sure to keep things hot though. If it cools down too much, the solubility of the caffeine drops dramatically and we could lose product. Gravity filtration is still pretty slow though, so after the first 100 milliliters is collected, I wash the coffee grounds with another 100 milliliters of boiling water. Then I change out my coffee filters and filter all of the liquid into a clean flask. I then wash the original flask with distilled water and add it to the coffee. Now I'm going to ice bath the coffee in order to make the caffeine less soluble in water. This is important for my next step, which is washing the coffee with dichloromethane or DCM for short. Once the coffee reaches 5C or about 44 degrees Fahrenheit, I pour everything into a separatory funnel, followed by 15 milliliters of dichloromethane. I then cap, shake, and vent the funnel before allowing the DCM to separate. In this step, the caffeine is more soluble in the DCM, so caffeine is favoring the DCM over water. Once it separates, we will drain the DCM layer into a clean flask, then we repeat this step with three more washings of 15 milliliters, followed by two washings of 20 milliliters of dichloromethane. On my last 15mm washing, I shook too hard and caused an emulsion. This can be really, really annoying, and it can take hours and sometimes with some solvents even days to separate. I decided I would try to add some additional DCM to try to help separate it, which kind of worked, though it still took somewhere around 30 minutes to separate and it looks like it has taken some additional color from the coffee as well, which really shouldn't be a big deal, though hopefully recrystallization does clean it up a little bit. Finally, after all six of my washings, I add the DCM into a clean separatory funnel. Followed by 120 milliliters of saturated salt solution, just like before, I cap, shake, and vent. This acts to dry the DCM from any water that still remains in it. It also cleans up a lot of the oils that contaminated my DCM from my emulsion. You can really see just how much cleaner the DCM layer is now. Before it was dark and murky, and now it's just a nice yellow color. I then drain my DCM layer into a clean flask filled with molecular sieves. I use 3A molecular sieves specifically, though you could have used something like calcium chloride too. This will continue to dry the DCM. I leave the sieves in for about 20 minutes with occasional mixing. 
Then, we filter the sieves from the DCM into a recrystallization dish, followed by washing the sieves with a small amount of DCM and adding that as well. From here, we will evaporate off the DCM. DCM boils at around 104 degrees, so it is better to take it slow. This will also make sure that the caffeine in the DCM doesn't burn as it evaporates, which is really easy to do. From my experience, anything more than a slow burn can actually burn the final product and you, use, you lose yield. As the DCM gets lower and lower, I am slowly moving it around the dish to evaporate it easier. During this time, I take it off the heat and just hover it slightly above. Once the DCM is almost gone, I move it around the edges of the dish, and when we do this for the final time, we can see the caffeine instantly being left on the surface of the dish. Now for recrystallization. We used an hydrocethanol that I made in a previous video. We want to make sure that the dish is still warm or hot while adding the ethanol. This will warm up the ethanol and increase the caffeine solubility in it. The real issue I had here is not having enough ethanol to fully dissolve everything. So I ended up having to reheat the dish a few times in order to, for everything to dissolve. Though normally with recrystallizations, you would want as little of solvent as possible. So having this problem of too much caffeine was new to me. Normally, I'd be using something around 2-4 to four milliliters of ethanol for recrystallization, but now on this one, I used about 20 milliliters, so we'll see how it goes. While heating it up, you notice that I'm sucking it into the syringe and blasting it onto the sides of the walls where the caffeine still is. After this, I move the ethanol around the dish and get as much caffeine to dissolve as possible. From here, I add all of the caffeine and ethanol into a test tube for recrystallization. It worries me a lot that the ethanol was so orange, though I was hoping that the recrystallization would take care of it. I let it sit at room temperature for about 5 minutes before adding it to an ice bath for about 30 minutes. When I pulled the test tube out, I see nice fluffy crystals in it, though it's hard to see it on camera. Now, the final step is to vacuum off the ethanol and dry the caffeine. When I did this, I see the ethanol did take some of the color. A second recrystallization would probably completely clean it, or at least it would make it whiter. But I ran out of ethanol, so I ordered more, so maybe I'll do it next time. In the end, I got about 0.8 grams of pretty pure caffeine, though it obviously isn't super pure. I have run this a few times most being general failures. On one attempt, I did get super white caffeine, though nowhere near the yield I got this time. I took some microscope shots for viewing gratification. On a final note, I want to thank everyone who participated in my Cadaverine Halloween giveaway. I have emailed the winners, but here are some of the names again. Congratulations and thank you guys so much for supporting my channel. I'll mail them out sometime this week or next week. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers, which you can see their names here. And honestly, you guys are the reason I love putting out content, so thank you so much. Here are all the videos that I'm currently working on. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.